Hi, I'm Jessica Russo Cher, and today I'm going to teach you how to paint skin tones as easily as possible. We're going to learn how to mix those colors from a few basic colors and get a whole variety of skin tones. So no matter who you're painting, you can get those skin tones accurate. You can use these same techniques for both acrylic paint and oil paint. Well, let's start with our color palette. The first thing we have to consider are the colors that we're choosing. You don't need a ton of paint to do this, but you do need some basics. Whatever you do, don't go to the store and buy a tube of paint that you're like, oh, this is flesh colored. This is skin tone. Uh, because our skin is made up of a lot of different tones and one bottle is not going to meet all your needs. So we're going to mix colors. And guess what colors we're going to start off with? Our primary colors, red, yellow, and blue. Granted, we're not going to use a ton of blue, but we will be using that. And that will be the foundation for mixing any skin tone for any person that you're, you're painting. Now this goes if you're using traditional lighting and you have, um, you're not going for like blue tinged or pink tinged uh, dramatic effects. That would require a different color palette. But for standard lighting and skin tones, you need red and yellow and blue. Now with that, you're going to need a cool red and a warm red. A cool red would be something like alizarin crimson, and a warm red would be something like a cadmium red. And this will help you get a wider range of skin tones. You have those two reds. Those are gonna be integral in creating both the highlights and shadow areas. As far as yellows, a lot of that will depend on the skin tone. If there's a lot of yellow undertones, you probably will be using yellow okra more. If there's not a lot of yellow undertones to the skin, then you're probably going to be using cadmium yellow. So we have two reds and two yellows. For now, we're just gonna start off with one blue. So why would you use blue? Well, we need a little bit of blue to mix in with the colors to neutralize it. If we think about our color wheel and complementary colors, colors that are across from each other on the color wheel are complementary colors. So orange and blue are complementary colors. And if you think about in general skin tones of all sorts, they have some sort of orange-ish color tone and blue is the opposite. So that will neutralize the color and that will make it appear less synthetic. So if you're painting someone who has, let's say my skin tone, I won't look like I have Barbie doll pink skin. Another color that we can't live without when painting is white. Titanium white is the white that I prefer because it's more opaque and you will, no matter what skin tone you're using, going to be using a lot of white. For the highlight areas, into the rest of it, white is the main color that we'll be using. Okay, so that will take you through a lot of skin tones. I made this little chart that kind of shows you those colors and how you can mix it. And that will get you a whole variety. There are some skin tones that you will need a little bit darker and uh, you might wanna use some burnt umber, umber for that. I don't like using burnt umber a lot when it's mixed with white because it can create some gray um, and make things look a little chalky. However, if you're not mixing a lot of white in with the color and you're having mostly reds, yellow ochre, little bit of blue, and you need some burnt umber or even burnt sienna mixed in with the colors that can get you some of the darker skin tones. However, it's not necessary. For example, I use the same color palette in this painting as I did this painting. It's just a matter of the quantities that you mix and how you mix them. One of the things that you have to consider right off the bat is how light is your lightest value and how dark is your darkest value and how do you create that sort of value scale in between the two. I like to start off with blocking in my darkest darks by mixing burnt umber and ultramarine blue 
And this is only going to be in the darkest, darkest areas. It might be a little bit in a nostril or a little bit in a crease of a mouth. It might be a little bit in a, a shadow by an eye or where the um, eyelashes are, not actually painting the eyelashes, but the thickness of that. Just to get an overview of the darkest darks and no white is mixed into that color off with my highlights. So just looking at my face now, if I was painting my face as it's lit now, I have a highlight on my nose. So that would be the lightest light that I use. And I would try to figure out how light that is. Is it white white or is it, you know, if we think about a value scale from zero being black and 10 being pure white, you know, is this kind of like maybe a seven and eight, you know, how dark on that value scale is my highlight? And then I start looking around my face to see, is there anything else that's that light? Kind of got a little bit over here, might be close to being that light, maybe a little bit darker. Got a little bit of a highlight on my nose over here, maybe that. Slowly mix my colors with less white to add, be like, oh, my forehead. It's just a, sh a hint darker than that. So if I mix just a little bit less white into the color, boom, I got my forehead. The main thing is to consider value. You can look at this portrait that I'm painting where I did half of her face in um, black and white in monochrome and half in color. And I really took the same approach. It's just thinking about the value of the color more than the color itself. One thing you have to consider is that your colors will look different if there's an underpainting. So here's some examples of the same color on blue, on yellow ochre, and on burnt sienna and white, and how that color can look different depending on what is painted underneath. When I'm mixing paint, I usually start with the red and the yellow, either warm or yellow ochre or cadmium yellow, depending on the skin tone. And then I add white and I start making a progression, uh, a value scale within that. And then I add just the corner of my brush into the blue to help neutralize that color. And here's what a value scale within that color range could look like. You could start off with having a wide variety of lighter values. And as you add more blue and less white, the color range gets darker, the tones get darker in value. And all of this is done without mixing in any black paint. Here's the same value scale with using my different yellows and reds to create a variety of different skin tones. And here is a slightly more detailed chart showing the same amount of skin tones that you can get with a warm red, cool red, cadmium yellow, yellow ochre, and some burnt sienna, burnt umber, and ultramarine blue, as well as titanium white. I put a little dab of the paint that I used next to each block of value tones. So you can see how they were mixed and what colors went into that particular value scale. Keep in mind, these are just some basic guidelines on how to approach painting a range of skin tones. Of course, you can use other colors. You can blend those colors together to get more interesting skin tones and ranges of values. This is just an idea of how to approach mixing your own value scales to get a range of colors to fit your needs. And of course, in a lot of my paintings, I go beyond that color palette and I add splashes of color. One of my favorite colors of paint to mix uh, is a cool red called Cranacridone Violet, which is slightly more uh, bluish purple and it's very powerful. And I use that in a lot of my paintings and you'll see pops of that color coming out more dramatically. 
I love blue and green undertones in skin, uh, no matter the skin tone, and I tend to embody that. So use this as a guideline, embrace it, and then build off of it. And that's the simple approach to mixing skin color. It's time to get painting.